magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. We are here this evening to taste and to see that the Lord is good. Welcome to CJC Online Church. We are in for a grand time. We are in for a glorious time this evening as we worship our maker, or redeemer, and our friend, King Jesus. A blessed welcome to all of you who are watching this evening. Those of you who are on our Facebook page, our YouTube channel, Bless TV, or watch CJCLive.com. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We invite you to share the link with someone at this time, and we also encourage you to follow us at, at CJCSDA on Instagram and Facebook if you haven't done so as yet. We also invite you to place your prayer request in the chat. We have special prayer this evening, and we also have a team standing by to make your requests unto God on your behalf. We are so very happy to see you, and I'm just going to say hello to a few persons I'm seeing on YouTube. I see Christine Davis, Rosalind Bissoon, and I'm also seeing Muriel Benjamin and Delroy Ham. I'm also seeing our very own president, Pastor Neville Barrett. Welcome, sir. Welcome, Mr. President. Happy to have you worshiping with us this evening. We have a new presenter for this evening, and you'll hear a little bit more about him later in the program. And we have prayer at this time, and I'm going to hand over to our pastor, who is standing by to pray for us. Thank you very much, Sister and Jerry James Sawyers. Now, indeed, we'd like to once again invite you to place your prayer requests within the chat. Whether you're watching on YouTube or you're on Facebook, we here at Central Conference, we are praying for you. We know that God hears and answers prayers. And in fact, the Prophetess of the Adventist Church clearly states that there is power and strength in prayer. Those who seek God in secret, telling the Lord their needs, pleading for help, will not plead in vain. The Father would see it in secret, himself shall reward thee openly. As we make Christ our daily companion, we shall feel that the powers of an unseen world are all around us. And by looking unto Jesus, we shall become assimilated to his image by beholding we will become change so we invite you to place your requests within the chat our prayer warriors they are standing by they're praying for you for your family they're praying for any sicknesses or diseases or maladies you may have they're praying for your children they're praying for your spouse they're praying for your neighbors and they're praying for you so let us know what your request is. And indeed, we present that request before God even now in this major prayer for this revival. We know that God cares for you. He's touched with the feelings of your infirmities. And indeed, reach out right now. As the deer panted for the water, so may our souls long after thee. At this time, we will go into our prayer song.
there is a lovely testimony right now in the chat. Janelle Newell reports that her lungs had collapsed last week, but now she has been healed and restored. Indeed, God hears and answers prayers. So for the Hartnell family, you have asked us to pray for you. We're lifting up your family before God to make sure that entire unit will be bonded together and walk in the love and unity with God. Sister Anderson, we see your requests for spiritual strength and we will lift you up before the Lord. We know that God cares for you and he will answer your prayers. For those who are praying for their children, rest assured, God sees the tears that you cry. And he's reaching out right now, making a way for that son, that daughter, to come back home and to come back to the fold. And for those who are sick, like Janelle, claim the victory. Know that God hears you and he will heal your infirmities. I invite you to just bow your heads with me at this time as we present these requests before the Lord. Sister Watson, we see your request also. And we know that God will give you the refreshing season that you long for in your life. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are God that loves us. You care for us. You hear the cries of our hearts. You answer our prayers. And Lord, we come to you knowing that you will indeed give us the victory as we surrender our lives to you. We, we thank you for the deliverance of Sister Janelle that even though her lungs had collapsed, you have restored her and you have given her breath so that she can praise you. Lord, you have done it once again and you continue to come through for your people. You continue to stand in the gap. You continue to heal and deliver. You continue to allow us to be able to smile amidst our storm because you alone are God and you deserve our worship and our praise. Oh Lord, we lift up to you, Sister Anderson, who's asking for a deeper walk and faith in you. Lord, be with her, strengthen her, help her to feel your presence uh, all around her and in her that she will continue to glorify you and praise your name. We pray for the Hartons family that indeed they may be bonded closer and that your love, your cord of love will surround them and be with them. We pray for Sister Watson who wants to make sure that her entire being is committed and surrendered to you we lift her up Lord knowing that she wants to serve you and Lord just like how she wants to call you your God you want to call her your child so bless her and keep her we lift up also the other requests uh, indeed we have the Barretts who are asking for prayers uh, we ask indeed that you will bless and keep them we ask that you be with the McAllen's also who are asking for prayer Lord we know that you will indeed deliver them and be with them and Lord we ask that you will help their family to respect you and that their children who they're praying for and their grandchildren will come to know you who is life eternal Oh Lord, indeed, someone from Canada right now who's watching is having some health issues. No, Lord, they haven't stated what those health issues here in the chat, but Lord, we know that you know what they're going through. You know where they are. You know their infirmities. And Lord, you are the great physician. You are able to heal the sick. You are able to deliver. You are able to make us overcomers. And Lord, we place the situation in your hand. We trust you. We hope in you. We believe in you that Lord, you can work miracles even 
when there is doubt, that you are able to work miracles even when the doctors have given up. You are able to work miracles and deliver us even when we can't see our way. So Lord, we place the situation in your hand and know that you will do that which is great and pleasing in your sight because God, whatever you do, is always well done. Oh Lord, we trust you that you will continue to lead. And as we enter into the second week of a revival series here in this great conference, we pray that your Holy Spirit will touch each and every single member, every single participant. Lord, we desire to have a total membership involvement as each and every one of us have been moved by the Holy Spirit to proclaim your word, to be revived for your cause and to go for more. As we spread your word, we also ask for a special anointing on this week's speaker, Pastor Michael Harvey. We ask for a fresh anointing on him. We pray that he will not be seen, but you will be seen, and that you will just simply use him as a vessel, as a conduit for your honor and for your glory. May true revival take place in our hearts and in our lives. Uh, and may we focus uh, on the message you have given us for the end time. Uh, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Continue to place your request in the chat. And we'll continue to pray for you. God bless you. Emmanuel name so sweet 
every rock me rock upon Jesus, Jesus' name, so sweet. Every rock me rock upon Jesus, Jesus' name, so sweet. Sweet Jesus, sweet Jesus, what a wonder you are. You are brighter than the morning star. You are fairer, much fairer. Trust in me. Uh, I, I feel like pressing. Oh, I feel like pressing. Oh, I feel like pressing my way. I'm on, on my way to glory. And I feel like pressing my way. Press. I feel like pressing. I feel like pressing. I feel like pressing my way. No, on, on my way to glory. And I feel like pressing my way. I feel like pressing, I feel like pressing my way On my way to glory And I feel like pressing my way Press along saints, press along in God's own way Press along saints, press along in God's own way Persecution we must bear Trials and crosses in our way Oh, the utter, the battle, the sweeter, the victory. Come on and press along. Press along, saints, press along in God's own way. Press along. Press along, saints, press along in God's own way. Persecution we must bear. Trials and crosses in our way. Oh, the utter, the battle, the sweeter, the victory. Fire, fire, fire. Day of Pentecost, fire fall on me. Fire, 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 fire fall on me. Fire, 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 fire fall on me. On the day of Pentecost, fire fall on me. On the day of Pentecost, fire fall on me. that we have a consuming desire to know God by an experimental knowledge, to come into the audience chamber of the Most High, reaching up the hand of faith and casting our helpless souls upon the one mighty to save. His loving kindness is better than life. If we but realize how earnestly Jesus worked to save the world with a gospel seed. We, living all the very close operation, would labor untiringly.
to give the bread of life to the perishing souls. Why are we so cold and indifferent? Why are our hearts so unimpressible? Why are we so unwilling to give ourselves to the work which Christ consecrated his life? Something must be done to cure the terrible indifference that has taken hold of us. Let us bow our heads in humiliation as we see how much less we have done than we might have done to sow the seeds of truth. My brethren and sisters, I speak to you in word of love and tenderness. Arouse and consecrate yourselves unreservably to the work of giving the light of truth for this time to those in darkness. Ellen G. White, Review and Herald, April 29, 1909. gathered together to praise the Lord, and we are being revived to go for more. That's 
the theme for our evangelistic series, Revived to Go for More. And I am seeing that we have Rosalind Bissoon from Trinidad. Welcome to Trinidad. I am checking to see if anyone else has shared where they are watching us from. If you haven't shared that information with us as yet, we invite you to do so at this time. We'd love to see where you are watching us from. If you have just joined us, welcome to you. And we are very happy that the Lord has ordered your steps to be here with us this evening. If you have prayer requests, we invite you to place them in the chat. We also are encouraging you to share the video, share the link rather, with someone. I'm seeing prayer requests coming in and that is wonderful. I'm also seeing Myrna Bristol watching us from Maryland in the United States. Welcome to you. Let's see if I am seeing anyone else mentioning where they are watching us from. We also have Joy Charles. Hello, Sister Joy. It's good to see you from Tobago. Maureen Thomas is watching from Old Harbor. We also have Doreen Bryan from Tradiga Park, SDA. Julia Brown from Atlanta, Georgia. And we also have Sister Althea from Florida and Merlene from the United States as well. Thank you so much for letting us know where you are watching us from. All right. So that was our YouTube channel. I am not sure what's happening on Facebook. I'm just going to check there very quickly. Okay, so what I'm seeing there is a prayer request and also blessings from Resilient Denise. Thank you for that, Sister, Sister Denise. We are going to, at this time, invite our Executive Secretary for the Central Jamaica Conference, Pastor Howard Grant Langley, to introduce our speaker for this evening. It is indeed a wonderful opportunity that we have once more to be in the house of the Lord. And as you know, by now you should know the name of this series. It should roll off your tongue. It is the Revived to Go for More Evangelistic Series. And we are in our second week. Yes, we are in our second week. And our speaker for this week, our speaker for this week is Michael Hugh Harvey. He holds a PhD in education and leadership. He is a justice of the peace and he currently serves as the education, public affairs and religious liberty director of the Central Jamaica Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. He, since has, he has been serving in this capacity since the 1st of July, 2022. Pastor Harvey, Dr. Harvey, Previously served as the pastor for the Maranatha District of Seventh Adventist Churches from December 2019 through to the 2nd of July 2022. Not only that, he also served the Northern Caribbean University as vice president of the, the Division of Spiritual Affairs, senior pastor of the University Church, and director for empowerment, training, and education projects from August 2010 to November 2019. Throughout the rest of this week, you'll hear some more about this man of God. But I need to let you know that Dr. Harvey is married to the former Lloyda Broomfield and they have been blessed with two grown children, Yolissa Kayla and Michael Hugh Jr. He is a devoted leader and is guided by the philosophical, philosophical views that, and I quote, the world cannot stand in the way of a person who knows where he or she is going and that service is the return one gives for one's existence. I invite you to, at the appropriate time, listen carefully to this man of God 
as he bring God's, brings God's message to us for this time. Before he does, however, we'll have that special prayer. And right after that prayer, that special musical rendition. And then we'll hear God's man's servant bringing God's message to us. Pastor Williams will now uh, pray for us that special prayer at this time. Shall we bow our heads together and assume an attitude of prayer at this time? Heavenly loving Father, our God and our wonderful Savior, we thank you once again for the privilege that we have that we can come to call you our Father. We thank you, Lord, for access to the throne of grace and mercy. We thank you for this day once again and for the blessings of the day. Thank you, Lord, for the blessings that you have poured out upon us thus far. And we thank you in advance for blessing in anticipation. For this meeting, O oh God, we commit your man's servant once again in your hand. We ask you to empower and inspire him. As you have used him in the past, we ask you to use him mightily again this evening. That hearts will be blessed, souls will be transformed, people will run to you knowing that time is running out. We thank you, Lord, that he has availed himself to be used by you. And so, God, as you overpower, as you lead him, speak through him as you speak to him. We pray yet again, O oh God, for those who are in the chat, those who are going through difficult challenges, Dealing with hospital sickness, oh God, you know the challenge that your children face. Yet their faith has extended to you and they have declared this much by placing them in the chat. We pray for your visitation. We pray, Lord, that you will come by those who are in the hospital, those who are going to the ER, the family, the young lady who is always at the ER. We pray, God, for your divine visitation. We ask that you as the great physician, the sympathizing Jesus, will do something marvelous and miraculous for this young lady. We pray for that gentleman who has been asking for special physical deliverance we ask oh god that you will intervene in this situation that he will experience your power that he will praise you in advance knowing that you're faithful and that you always deliver and so god we commit each one who have expressed their faith in you through the chat on youtube lord we pray for your special intervention we pray for your special deliverance we pray for your special provision and your protection we pray lord that through this meeting as we worship you tonight heaven will come down glory will fill our soul and we will be careful to give you alone the praise the honor and the glory this we ask with thanksgiving and the forgiveness of our sins and we ask it all in the mighty the marvelous and the wonderful name of jesus amen and amen
divine power is available. We have come to lift up God. I believe the greatest need today is the need of the Holy Spirit. For in order for us to be equipped for mission, we need the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And so we thank God this evening that he's available to minister to us where we are. He is not limited to geographical boundaries. He's available to all of God's children. So at this time, wherever you are, I invite you to bow your heads as we seek the Lord. Our Heavenly Father, creator and sustainer of life. We sense our need of you. We are incapable without you. But tonight, we come not in our own strength, but in the strength you will provide. So right now we ask you, as only you can, to curfew the place, arrest the attention of your people, for we know you are not limited to geographical boundaries, but wherever your people are right now, oh God, do a mighty work in our midst. I ask as I stand in this desk that you will make me pliable in your hands so that the words of my mouth and the heart's meditation of your children will be pleasing in your sight. Thank you for your sons and your daughters. In this group, Hosanna prays. We thank you for their ministry. We thank you for their commitment and dedication. We thank you for Sister Lisa, who sang earlier the prayers prayed by your sons, Williams and Douglas. And Lord, do for us tonight what we can do for ourselves. We will give you the praise, the honor, and the glory that this you deserve and you alone. For we ask these mercies in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you very much. Good evening, everyone. I'm delighted to be here this evening, having received the baton from Evangelist Devon Thomas. What a mighty moving of God in this place. As we make ourselves available for what God will do for us. I believe that there is no better place to be than in the presence of God. Thank you to our executive secretary, Pastor Howard Grant Langley for his kind words of introduction. And I was informed earlier that our president, Pastor Neville Barrett, is online. I greet you wherever you are around the world on the CJC platform as we come for this revival series, Revived to Go for More. I pray that God will bless us tremendously. Tomorrow evening, we will not be here. Tuesday evening, we will rest. But come Wednesday evening, you have to be here. Invite your friends. Share the link. Invite your family members, your community members. 
tell them that the best location is to be on the Central Jamaica Conference platform. Something miraculous, something marvelous is happening. And I know you will do that. Thank you. All in favor say aye. Those who oppose nay, the eyes have it. Thank you very much for doing that for us. I'm happy also to have with me this evening in studio my wife, Lloyd, who has been driving me over the place for the weekend. And it is a very good feeling to be chauffeur driven. Thank you very much for being here. And I know that my daughter, Yolissa, Though miles away, she is watching. And my son, MJ, the replica of me, we're delighted to be here to offer service in God's church. I want to speak to you this evening on the topic, Moving Mighty Mountains to Mission. Allow me to share with you my foundational text this evening. Get your Bible because we believe in the Word of God. So get the Word and we will be reading Zechariah chapter 7, chapter 4 rather, and the verse is verse 7. I'll be reading from the New King James Version. Listen to the word this evening. It says, What are you, mighty mountain, before Zerubbabel you will become level ground. Then he will bring out the capstone to the shouts of God bless it. God bless it. God bless it. My brothers and my sisters, my viewing audience, we are getting ready to embark on one off, if not the most consequential and momentous divine rescue mission in the history of this conference. The stakes are high. The crisis is not coming. The crisis is here. Crime and violence are moving like snarmy in our society. There is a cultural and moral malaise destroying the foundational fabric of our very existence. The crisis is not coming. It is here. The call for us this evening as we converge on this platform the call has come for us to put on our shoes our gospel shoes to climb every mountain forge every stream and follow the interests wherever they lead presenting Christ for the crisis for the Bible tells us in Isaiah 52 verses 7 and 8 for how beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of the person that brings good tidings that publishes peace that brings good tidings of good that proclaims salvation, that says to the world, our God reigns. Watch men and watch women shall lift up 
their voices with the voices together they shall sing for they shall see eye to eye when the Lord shall rescue his people break forth into joy sing together waste places help is on the way I don't know what your situation is I don't know what your struggles are I don't know what you have been through since the day began I don't know the crucibles through which you are going but I stop by to tell you that help is on the way because we serve a mountain moving God let the church say amen I believe with all my heart morality has taken back seat to naked self-interest but help is on the way as I speak with you this evening on the topic moving mighty mountains to mission let me say at the onset that the success of the upcoming series will depend to a very large extent a very large degree on how we deal with these mountains you see mountains represent the insurmountable immovable the seemingly impossible obstacles to mission you see brothers and sisters this is a, a spiritual venture this is something that we of ourselves in our human frailties cannot accomplish without God you see the mountain may seem too steep to climb the mountain may seem too wide to cross the mountain may seem too calamitous to conquer when we face mighty mountains to mission some people just pretend the mountains are not there some people want to blame others for their inactivity and lack of passion for the mission and may I pause to say right here that passion is stronger than death you didn't hear me I say passion is stronger than death so when we have a passion for God we will not be afraid of dying in fulfilling God's mission I am putting Central Jamaica Conference and the rest of our viewing audience on notice because this may be our last opportunity to rescue someone for God we are on a divine rescue mission mm -hmm. some people are stopped by the mountain they say we can't go over it they say we can't go around it they say we can't go under it they are stopped by their mountains but I say to you this evening to remove difficulties or obstacles Jesus says have faith in God have faith 
in God. Then say to this mountain, be taken up and thrown into the sea. You see, brothers and sisters, the purpose of faith is to move mountains. You didn't hear what I say. I said the purpose of faith is to move mountains because faith is not just ordinary faith. The object of our faith is God, the God who spake and it was done, who commanded and it stood fast. When we have faith in this, our God, can I talk to you this evening? There is nothing that can stand in your way in accomplishing God's will. God is the one who moves mountains. Let the church say amen. amen. The insurmountable, the immovable mountains which confront us suddenly are no longer insurmountable, immovable barriers. The mountainous obstacles will no longer be mountainous with Christ. Yes, together with God, we are an overcoming force. You can read that in Matthew chapter 21 from verse 21 to verse 22. But let me dig into what I have to say to you and get you out of here. Fasten your seatbelts as we get into it. The key text says, and I'll read it again. What are you? Mighty mountain, before Zerubbabel, you will become level ground. Then he will bring out the capstone to shouts of God bless it. God bless it. You see, Zerubbabel, the leader of the people of Judah had a great task to perform. After he led the first exiles back from the Babylonian captivity, he was called by God to begin the rebuilding of the temple in Jerusalem. In the first two years, the foundation of the temple was laid. But then work came to a standstill for 17 years because the disruptive activity of the Samaritan people. Oh, have mercy. There will always be people who will try to hinder or to hedge up the work of God. There will always be people who are short-sighted. They will create stumbling blocks to the path that God intends. I know you are sitting there and some even now are thinking when we are talking about Christ for the crisis series that is coming up. There are those who may have already erected mountains and barriers and they are telling us why it cannot happen, why it must not happen. But I'll stop by to tell you this evening. Listen to the word of God. There is no one that can close a door that God has already opened. And let the church say amen. So here it is. The text is a part of a prophetic message. Zechariah received from an angel concerning the completion of Zerubbabel's temple project. The angel's message still speaks to us tonight. Like Zerubbabel, we have been called by God to do something in the kingdom of God. And we 
will not cower. We will not flinch in the face of these mighty mountains. We will not cower. We will not flinch in the face of these mighty mountains. Like Zerubbabel, however, your own personal vision of the Samaritan people may have placed a seemingly insurmountable mountain before you. And now you may be harboring doubts. The angel's message to you tonight is that the mighty mountain is really nothing at all because we have on our side the mighty mountain mover. His name is Jesus. And man plus God constitute a majority. I don't care. I don't know what you might be saying. I have no fear as long as we are in God's will and in God's favor. Let the church say amen. Nothing can stop the mighty moving of God. Mm -hmm. You see, before you, as before Zerubbabel, the mighty mountain will become nothing more than level ground. Although it looks insurmountable, impossible and irremovable God himself is with you and he will help you to overcome I give you this God as we make our lives ourselves available to be used to be conduits in the hands of God for this mighty moving that he's getting ready to do in central Jamaica conference so I say to you go forth continue the project and complete the task for the Lord will move the obstacles Eliminate the difficulties and overcome the opposition. What seemed impossible will become possible. The project won't succeed because of anyone's might or power. But because of the very spirit of God. Not by might nor by power. But by my spirit, say the Lord. And the prayer we need to pray is over o'er me. Holy Spirit, bathe my trembling heart and brow. Fill me with thy hallowed presence. Come and fill me now. You see, for revival to take place, God's people must be prepared and revived. Let me repeat. For revival to take place, God's people must be prepared and revived. In this or preparatory stage, there are some mighty mountains to mission that must be confronted and moved if God is going to work as he wants to work in this series. What are these mighty mountains, preacher? What are these mighty mountains, preacher? I am glad you asked. So I can tell you, the mountains, seven mountains, Seven mountains that must be moved for revival to take place and for this upcoming series to be what it ought to be. I'm talking to you this evening. Yes, my brothers, I'm talking with you. 
my sister, in the comfort of your home and wherever you are listening. It is not, life is not a dress or a practice session. Life is not a dress rehearsal or a practice session. It is a matter of life and death. And I'm here to talk with you this evening as God gives me power to declare this word. Mountain number one that must be moved. S-I-N. I'm talking to my church. How come you are here talking to believers and to talk about sin? Yes, I'm talking about sin because one of the biggest barriers between man and God is sin. Biggest obstacle. Put that on the screen for me so that the folk can read it. First John chapter 1 and the verse is verse 6. What it says, put it up there so that we, the folk, can see it. This is the greatest barrier between man and God. Sin alienates. Sin divides. Sin obstructs. Sin marginalizes. Sin deteriorates and ultimately sin. Our greatest problem as humanity is the problem of sin and you can't dress it up. It doesn't matter your educational accomplishment or your earthly possession. If you have everything and sin is dominant, you are dying. And what the church needs is to hate sin. With a passion, sin is like leprosy. Sin is putrefying. Sin is not anything to hug up. Sin is our greatest obstacle to God's moving. And I'm talking to my church. I'm talking to those online. That sin has to be eradicated. We can't be holding on to pet sins. And there are some folk who believe that there are certain kinds of sin that, that, must, uh, that must be pointed out. But can I talk to you? Anything that separates from God, anything that alienates you from your brothers and your sisters, anything that makes you look down at your brother or your sister as if they are inferior and you are superior, it's a problem. The mountain of sin must be removed. Then, mountain. Number two, mountain number two, partial submission. Lord have mercy, partial submission. You know, there are some folk who don't mind as long as they go to church on Sabbath, return their tithe and their offerings, but, but that is as far as they will go. There are those who have lacked passion for Jesus. They have lacked passion for Jesus. No longer are they moved and are concerned by the things that Jesus himself is concerned about. Partial submission. This is a second mountain that needs to be removed for revival to take place. What is that? Partial submission. Listen to what 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 5 says. The people having a form of godliness. Having a form of godliness. But denying the power thereof having a form of godliness 
Oh, Christians who are connected with God can't be weaklings. Christians who are committed to God must understand the times in which we live. We must not try to live to fit in and become popular. We, we, no, 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 no. We are not in a popularity context. No, not a popularity contest. No, we must lead by principles. Can't have partial submission. It is all or nothing at all. Right now, you are thinking and the spirit is moving. And we are all doing introspection because we know it is going home time and we have to eradicate sin out of our lives. That is why the Bible tells us in Galatians chapter 5 and verse 1, he says, now that Jesus has set you free, you must no longer be enslaved by sin or go back into bondage, but you must stand firm in the liberty that God has given to you. And the liberty that God has given is not for us to live the way we want to live. No, no, not to do the things we want to do, but to stand up and to hold fast to the teachings of God. We must have the power that God wants us to have Holy Ghost power. Then, mountain number three. Lack of commitment. Lack of commitment. You have to be begging people, nudging them, poking them to do something for God. I'm here to say to us this evening, we cannot allow this moment or our, our lack of commitment to stand in our way for this upcoming series. We need total member involvement. Everybody, God has no step children. We all belong to him and we must get involved. Listen what the Bible says. These people honor me with their lips. Matthew 15, verse 8. These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Lack of commitment. There must be no dichotomy between our proclamation and our demonstration. People are watching. Mountain number four. Indifference to the things of God. Mountain number four. Indifference to the things of God. Can I talk to you as I feel it this evening? Listen what Ezekiel chapter 22 verse 26 to 29 says. Fasten your seatbelts. If we are going to have the outcome that God intends. This mountain of indifference to the things of God must go. Hear what the Bible says. You priests, you pastors, violated my law and desecrated my holy things. They can't tell the difference between the sacred and the secular. They can't tell the difference between the sacred and the secular. They tell people there is no difference between right and wrong. They are contemptuous of my holy Sabbaths, profaning me by trying to pull me down to the levels. For revival... To take place. I'm not talking. It must begin. From the pulpit. To the pew. I am talking. To my own self. I'm talking. To my colleagues. If this evangelistic series. Is going to be. 
what God intends it to be. It simply means that we, there must be no indifference to the things of God. God's servants, God's pastors must be fired up, ignited, challenged with fire in their belly. That if a member is not going, the pastor is going. There's no time for entertainment in God's pulpit. It is no time to skirt around the truth. People are dying and God has called us to be watchmen on the walls of Zion from one end of central to the next. Every pastor must be on board, fired up and leading by example. If we are not, how will the members take it? Let it begin with us. That mountain has to go. I'm talking with you as I'm talking with myself. The revival begins right now with our total surrender and submission to God. God's will, God's will, God's will, not mine, God's will. I am here because God has kept me. I am here because there is a work to do. Hear the voice of Jesus. It is not about how or what. Sometimes we become so formal, so mechanical in what we do. It is not about what or how. It is why we do what we do. And I'm crying out tonight. This mountain must go for revival to take place. Mountain number five. That must go. Compromise. Compromise. First Corinthians 15, verse 33. I'm not here to cajole anyone this evening. In your home, I'm not here to doing that. If we want revival, revival must come. And the revival must begin with me. It must begin. It can't be business as usual. People are dying in their sins. Listen. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 33. Do not be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. We can't compromise God's word. We can't compromise because it is life or death, heaven or hell, Christ or Satan, sheep or goat, Hell or heaven. No middle ground. No compromise. It is thus saith the Lord. It is all or nothing. Are you ready to take the leap? This mountain must go. Mountain. Next one is distractions. Distractions. Too many people are distracted. Can I talk to you this evening? Can I talk with you as I prepare to bring it home? Distractions. We can't become distracted at this point. We can't be diverted. We, we can't, we have to put on blinkers. We have to be focused. And listen, you know where the distractions are coming from? Not outside. But from inside, beware of destructions. Nehemiah chapter 6 and verse 3. Listen to what the Bible says. Four times they entreated him to leave the safety of the city and meet with them under the pretense of resolving the conflict. But Nehemiah knew that their intent was not to help him, but to harm him. Each time they approach him, 
He responded with the same answer. I am doing a great work and I cannot come down. Come on church, say it with me. I'm doing a great work and I cannot come down. I am doing a great work and I cannot come down. I cannot come down. Members, we are doing a great work and we cannot come down because the consequences will be too great. The next mountain that must go is pride. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. This must go if God is going to work. You know, sometimes we are full of ourselves. It is me, myself, and I. As if the world revolves around me. Oh, can I talk to you, my friend? You don't have to compare or compete with anybody else. God has called you. God has gifted you. God has given you a work to do in the church that only you can do. Total member involvement. You don't have to be jealous about anybody. You don't have to try to match anybody. Just be you. Pride. Some people are too pompous, big eddy, and full of self. Listen to what the Bible says, Philippians 2, verse 3. Do nothing from rivalry or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. What if we will lay pride aside? And think about the people who are dying in sin. People who are languishing out there to hear the gospel. How can we be comfortable in Zion? Sitting down and quarreling about whose seat this is. Or whose seat is not that. And who should do this and that. When the people are dying. The mountain of pride must go. And when it goes, everybody will unite together for the work of God. Finally, the last mountain, lack of faith. Lack of faith. Listen to what the Bible says. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for. The conviction of things not seen and without faith it is impossible to please God for the person who comes to God must believe that he is God and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him then he says that is Hebrews chapter 1 verses 1 and 6 and in Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6, he says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not on your own understanding in all your ways. Acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. The angel's message to Zerubbabel is that a day is coming when your task will be completed. Then just as Zerubbabel placed the capstone on the temple, so you will place the finishing touches on the Christ for the crisis series. Your friends and fellow workers will celebrate with shouts of praise and worship because you looked to the Lord, the mighty mountains mover in your time of conflict and confusion, doubt and distraction, trials 
troubles and tribulations. Everything will be fulfilled and you will be blessed. Because we have begun the task God has called us to do. Then the message of his angel to us tonight is to look to him and go forth and finish the task. For it can only be accomplished by us. I will go. You should go. I say I will go. Will you go? We must go because souls need to be rescued. And like I can I tell you that they will not be rescued until we cross over these mountains. And let me close this evening by giving you a hymn that I love very dearly that epitomizes what I'm talking about. It says, just over the mountains. Just over the mountains in the promised land lies the holy city built by God's own hand as a weary footsteps gain the mountain's crest. We will view our homeland of eternal rest. We are nearing home. We are nearing home. See the splendor gleaming from the dooms afar. See the glory streaming through the gates ajar. There we soon will enter, never more to roam. Hear the angels singing. We are nearing home. We are nearing home. My brother, my sister, will you meet us there in the land of sunshine where there'll be no care except of God's message and to him be true. Then when Jesus cometh, he will call for you. We are nearing home. We are nearing home. See the splendor gleaming from the domes afar. See the glory streaming through the gates ajar. There we soon will enter, never more to roam. Hear the angels singing. We are nearing home. We are nearing home. Hosanna praise. He's going to sing that hymn for us. And while they are singing. Over the mountain is the promised land. While they are singing. Lies the holy city built by God. You are thinking. As a way no mansions on earth can be compared with the, the beauty of that which God has prepared for you and for me. We are You must come. The door is open. The invitation is being extended. And Jesus is waiting. I said the door is open. The invitation is extended. And Jesus is waiting. He said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and I'll sup with you. Would you come to him tonight? Would you surrender to him tonight? Yes, I'm talking to you. You may be walking, your name may be on the books. Yes, yes, yes. But you know deep down in your heart, somehow you have asked the devil pardon. You have wandered away. You have strayed from him. But there are only two words that he's saying to you tonight. Only return. Only return. Can you hear his voice this evening? 
Yes, brother. Yes, sister. Can you hear his voice? I'm talking to somebody this evening. You may not have already started the journey, but tonight God has spoken to you. Can you hear his voice? Can you feel the nudging of the Holy Spirit tugging at your heart? Yes, you can surrender to him right there in the chat. Just you and God. Don't watch anyone. It is you and God. Just indicate, I have wandered away, but I'm coming back. Oh, I haven't done it yet. But now I've heard his voice. I'm responding to his call because one of these days he is calling, but the other day he is coming. Would you be ready? Oh yes, salvation is available for you tonight. He has made the preparation for you. Very soon. To Rome. Hear the angels. Would you come? I thank you for your decision this evening. I thank you for your recommitment this evening. Oh yes, my brothers and my sisters. We are getting ready. The spirit is moving. The spirit is available. This is your moment. This is your time. Don't watch the crowd. Decide for Jesus. I'm talking to you right now, brother. Right now, my sister. Yes, you, brother. Yes, young man, this is your opportunity to come and taste and see that the Lord is good. He's mighty to save and he's able to save you. Would you? Yes, I know you will. Thank you for deciding for Jesus. Tonight he's calling. Tomorrow he's coming. Yes, you don't have to worry. He will take you just as you are. For if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Make your move for Jesus. And I know Pastor will pray for you when He comes this evening. But whatever you do, only return. Only return. The door is open the invitation is extended and Jesus is waiting our heavenly father once again we thank you for the power of your word that has gone mightily out throughout this program Right now, individuals who are watching, whether on YouTube or on Facebook, uh, they are praising you, they are glorifying you, they are surrendering to you because indeed we are nearing home. We thank you for the victory uh, that have been wrought tonight in the life of that young lady, that young man. Uh, we thank you for the victory that you're given. Uh, the adults, you have, you have blessed them, you have kept them, you have allowed them to see this moment when they can give their hearts and their lives to you. We thank you for the preaching of your word that has touched our hearts and our lives and revived us uh, for more, revived us uh, for mission, revive us to step out for you and to give you all honor, all glory, and all praise. Lord, we pray that this revival it may not just be for the now, the present, the moment, but indeed that this revival will be a seed planted in our hearts uh, that will grow up and flourish. Uh, and indeed our hearts and our lives will consistently and constantly be surrendered to you. So as the individuals click that little decision card within the chat, as they send up that prayer request. We know that your Holy Spirit is working with them. We know that your Holy Spirit is leading them. We know that ultimately they will make it right with you and they will experience uh, that water baptism. But beyond that, they will experience uh, the Holy Spirit baptism because uh, we are indeed nearing home soon. You will come and uh, you will not tarry. And therefore, we need to be ready to meet you. 
We pray for the churches that are on right now who are streaming this for their local congregation. Lord, we pray that every single one of us will do the work that you have given us to do. May we reach out to our friends, our neighbors. May we reach out to our communities. May we all be energized for your cause. It is not sufficient to just be keeping church and having church. We must recognize that our mission is to reach the world, to snatch them who are in sin and the grave and allow them to enjoy the joy of your salvation so we thank you for what you're doing we thank you as we go for more and may we all surrender and commit our lives to you we pray in Jesus name amen and amen we thank you for watching we thank you for surrendering we thank you for clicking that decision card and we encourage you to surrender fully to the Lord. Make sure that your calling is an election sure. And members of the Remnant Church, let us continue to work and pray for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit so we may be revived to go for more. God bless you. God bless you. Amen and amen. What a powerful sermon this evening. We are indeed moving mountains with our maker and our mountain mover. And God is calling heaven and earth as witnesses today against us that he has set before us life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, he's encouraging us to choose life that both we and our descendants may live, that we may love the Lord our God and that we may obey his voice and that we may cling to him for he is our life and the length of our days and that we may dwell in the land which the Lord swore to our fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac and Jacob to give to them. We trust and hope that you where you were brought to a place where you pondered on the words that were shared with us this evening from the word of God, the Holy Bible, as it pertains to moving mountains. And we encourage you, if you have not done so, to share the link with someone. We also invite you to join us on Wednesday, August 10 at 6.30 p.m. for another program in the Revive to Go for More series. We trust and hope that you had a wonderful encounter with Jesus this evening. And we just want to wish for you God's richest blessings as you go throughout the rest of this evening. Thank you.